You know what? Your sour beer is gonna suck unless you watch this video. That's right. Rolling. In this video, you're gonna learn about what pH is and what products you're gonna wanna buy. And most importantly, how to calibrate your pH meter so that your sour beers get the perfect amount of acidity. What he said. Aside from my dad, Paul Hardy, pH. That's pretty good. You digging it? Is this it? beer? Oh yeah. I'm still not too sure, but I think it's how acidic stuff is. And I'm literally texting Donnie right now so he could feed me all this information. It ranges from zero to 14. Zero is as acidic as it gets. And 14 is the exact opposite, and it's called alkaline. Water is the midpoint and often referred to as neutral. Green thumbers go off pH readers for soil. I don't know why. If you deal with fish tanks and aquariums, you definitely own a pH meter. And more importantly, if you're making sour beer, there's almost a 100% chance you have one of these. Here's the thing, under souring is okay because you can just give it more time, but you're using your pH meter to ultimately make sure you're not over souring. In short, a beer with a pH of 3.5 is a sour beer and a beer with a pH of 3.2 is an extremely sour beer. To be honest, I don't think I could even drink anything lower than 3.2. It would just taste like vinegar and have my mouth puckered up the whole time. Using lactobacillus, we can get to about 3.4, 3.5 in about 15 hours. If you forget that your beer is souring and you come back and check it and the pH is in the two range, you're fucked. How do you stop your beer from oversouring? Hit your desired pH and then bring it back to a boil or just bring it back uh, at least 180 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll throw in our peach Berliner Weiss recipe, PT ring sting in the description, but today is not about beer recipes. It's about what pH meter we plan on going with because they can range anywhere from about 10 to $300. <laughs> What are we using today? Three things we'll be using. Volvo Sun pH meter says it's the Amazon bestseller. Four stars with almost 1400 reviews gives me peace of mind. Mind you that it also comes with a parts per million meter, which is good for growing weed, but doesn't help with beer. 23 bucks on Amazon Prime. Then we're also gonna be using the Milwaukee 102 pH meter as well. We've used this in the past and it's always calibrated spot on. pH calibration solution. You're always gonna wanna use two of these. Never calibrate with just one. I've had pH readings calibrate at 4.0, but then they were way off when I did seven. I apologize for my voice, it's raspy. Now these I vouch for straight off the bat. General hydroponics is legit. It's maybe like eight or nine bucks each. Amazon Prime the fuck out of it. Okay, before you even need to turn it on or put batteries in it, let's hydrate the probe. This thing, called a probe, called an electrode, same difference. Now we don't need to waste a ton of solution. You just gotta make sure that this part is touching. And the solution is kind of pricey. And never, ever, ever, ever pour the solution back into the bottle after you're done calibrating. After we wait our 15 minutes, Let's begin calibration. Quick glance at the Milwaukee 102. Comes with a big battery. It should last a while. Comes with a probe and a thermometer. The thermometer plugs right in like a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and the probe kind of just twists on. Let's unscrew this thing and take it off. No, this one goes in your butt. This one goes in your mouth. And this one goes in your ear. Put it in our 7.0 solution, which is the green one. Turn it on, hit the cal button so it goes to 7.01. The number and the tiny pH in the top will be blinking. Once the pH in the top stops blinking, it's done calibrating and hit the CFM button to set it. Now shake off the solution and stir it around in some tap water and do it in the four solution, the pink one. Let's do the same thing. Hit the cal button so it resets to 4.01 and then when the pH stops blinking, I think it takes a little bit longer calibrating 4.0, hit the CFM button to set it. Should be good to go. Now go back and forth with it and always shake it off and rinse it every time you put it in a new liquid. Okay, Vivo Sun comes with three tier calibration, 4.0, 6.86, and 9.18. Generally, most pH readers are programmed to calibrate at four and seven, but sometimes you will see them calibrate at 6.6, 9.18, and I've seen 10 before. Okay, so here's how the directions read. Okay, let's get three glasses of water, each filled with eight ounces. Now let's cut each packet and pour them in each one of their own glass and stir it up. Okay. 
This pH meter is easier to calibrate. You just hold it down for five seconds in each cup. And when it starts blinking, it has been calibrated. And again, I stress every time you're moving from glass to glass, flick off any existing liquid, swirl it in tap water, and then flick the tap water. Okay, so it looks calibrated. Everything looks good at seven pH. And as for 4.01, we're already off to a bad start. Okay, let's grab our three lab rats. And by lab rats, I mean pickle juice, apple cider vinegar, and red wine. On the left, we have our apple cider vinegar, red wine in the middle, and then pickle juice. Okay, for the vinegar, here we go. And it's not even close. 0.4, that's a lot off. Okay, let's shake it and rinse it and try it with the red wine. And we are definitely off again. Red wine is acidic, but definitely not that acidic. And now I'm not feeling good about the Vivo Sun so far. Now for the pickle juice. Pickle juice is a little bit closer than the others, but the pH meters are definitely still way off. Now at this point, I have zero peace of mind. Maybe both are pieces of junk, but let's double check our work. This is how we're gonna find out. Let's grab any of our calibration solutions and spot check your pH readers. At the solution four, the Milwaukee was almost spot on. I did give it, I did give the Milwaukee two or three minutes and it slowly moved down to this. It did trickle along. Let's double check it at the seven. And the Milwaukee, after about a minute, I got to 7.04. The Viva Sun didn't budge at all in that minute. Quick disclaimer, the Viva Sun in the manual said to rinse with distilled water and not tap water. But honestly, we didn't mix the Milwaukee in any distilled water. So for an OCD person like me, or even not an OCD person, I think it's Milwaukee all the way. It's just got a, it's just got a better reader. It's just got a better probe. The probe's just more accurate. Hence the price tag.